I haven't seen my friend call me. He was like, Dave, having fun in Frisco? Hell yeah. Seen the sights? No. <laughs> you want to go see Alcatraz? What kind of nigga in his right mind wants to visit a prison for recreation? <laughs> I got friends in jail I don't visit. <laughs> I don't deal with jails. Don't deal with jails and I don't deal with police. My house got robbed in New York. I didn't even call the police. <laughs> I wanted to, but I couldn't. My crib is too nice. It's not that it's too nice, but it's too nice for me. <laughs> you know how the police are in New York. Soon as I open the door, they'll be like, oh, he's still here. <laughs> open and shut case, Johnson. <laughs> Apparently, this black guy broke in and hung up pictures of his family everywhere. <laughs> Never seen anything like it. Don't deal with them, man. I, I had to bail a friend of mine out of jail one time. You know, that was horrible. I was scared. I had to walk right into the belly of the beast. I tried to look as non-threatening as possible. Hi. I'm here to bail out my buddy. Oh, okay. Well, while you're here, you do fit a description. If you walk this way, we can process you. <laughs> How they always get us. It's fitting those damn descriptions. <laughs> now, I could be bitter and blame all the police, but no. I'll tell you who I blame. It's those fucking sketch artists. <laughs> they keep drawing the same brother over and over again. Who is this generic man we all look like? <laughs> I want to know what they say when it's us. You know, Amelia, be in that room like, did you get a look? Did you see the guy that tried to rob you? Yes. Yes, I did. <laughs> he was about six feet tall, I'd say. Six feet tall? Yes. He had his hat on backwards, too. Good. That's good stuff, hat was on backwards, yes. He was black, okay, big lips, big nose, dick hanging out, say no more, sir. I'll draw him from memory. You know, let me get my stencil, I think we can trace this guy and save some time. They get on the radio and shit, calling all cars, calling all cars. Be on the lookout for a black male between four, seven, and six, eight. Between 120 and 380 pounds. He's wearing Nikes. Get this man! This criminals are insane. I don't even know why people do crime. They want to catch you, they're going to catch you. They can. They got forensics. You ever seen forensics? Those guys find clues nobody else thinks about looking for. I mean it. You leave a pubic hair anywhere near a crime scene, they're gonna find that shit. What the, what the hell is this? Back up! We got a match. Then they look at the pubic and tell all kinds of information. Hmm, hmm. Looks like there was a struggle, huh? Time of death, 307. <laughs> it's amazing. I saw him get a dude one time on court TV. It was embarrassing. It was, it was a sexual assault case. I knew the defendant was lying. I could feel it. He defended himself too hard. He did, his answers had nothing to do with the questions. They're completely irrelevant. They asked him easy questions. Were you anywhere near the crime scene on the night of the incident? Motherfucker, I told you I work at Burger King. He was like, oh. <laughs> that went on for hours. <laughs> then the prosecutor got fed up. Said, I've had enough of this. Called the forensics to the stand. Forensics was like, Your Honor, we are prepared to testify that 
we found the defendant's semen <laughs> under the stove. I said, God damn. <laughs> That's worse than fingerprints. <laughs> you know, they find your semen. You've been there at least a minute. But that's what I want to know. Under the stove, you find semen like that? Or do you look for it? Like, do they walk onto a crime scene like, this place is a mess. Check it for semen. Or do they just like walk in and slip? <laughs> oh my God. What the hell was that? It's like, what are burglars doing? <laughs> we got the stuff, let's get out of here. Wait a minute. <laughs> I want to leave my calling card. <laughs> the semen bandit has struck again. 